Welcome to Math with Professor V, and by popular demand, I'm bringing back series of the day. So the task is determine whether or not the infinite series is convergent or divergent. We have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k times natural log of k over k plus 1 cubed. Now, the hardest thing for students when they're getting the hang of this topic is to pick the appropriate test. So let's run through what options we have and why they may or may not work. If you try ratio test or root test, they will both be inconclusive. The limit will come out to be one. So that's not the way to go, okay? Alternating series test, not appropriate. It's not an alternating series. What else do we have? Comparison or limit comparison test. Okay, that's a nice option, but like what do we compare it to? Usually we compare to either P series or geometric series, and this natural log is really getting in the way. Okay, then we get to the test that nobody really likes, integral test. Okay, I'm feeling like we might have to do this. Oh no. But um, before we jump into trying to integrate, we're gonna have to manipulate things a bit. Cause I'm already imagining if this was a function of X, oh, how would I integrate it? This K plus one is really making things difficult. So let's first just say, do we think this will converge or diverge? Just take a guess. I see k and ln of k in the numerator, okay? ln of k does not grow as fast as k. And then in the denominator, we have k plus one cubed. So that's basically growing like k cubed. So k over k cubed, that would simplify to one over k squared. And then we also have ln of k. I'm leaning towards when I think of my P series, you know, as long as P is greater than one, it will converge. I have a feeling like this will probably converge also. Okay. And like I said, before we just jump right into doing integral test, um, let's make life a little bit easier for ourselves. I'm going to state the following, clean up and then integrate. Watch what I'm going to do. So I have K ln of K. Like, what am I not excited to integrate? The fact that there's a K plus one in the denominator. I mean, that's really stressing me out. So can't I say this is smaller than just having K times natural log of K over K cubed? Is that not true? Right? If this denominator is larger, then the entire expression is smaller. And then I can even simplify now, cancel out one of the Ks, and this is equal to natural log of K over K squared. So my task has changed. The terms of my series are smaller than ln of k over k squared. Let me tell you what my goal is. This is what's going through my head right now. I want to show that the sum k equals 1 to infinity of ln of k over k squared converges. I need to do that somehow. And then by comparison, I can say that the OG series converges also. Okay, so I'm kind of taking a little detour just because this is going to be so much easier to work with. And yep, we're going to do the integral test, guys. So here we go. Before you proceed with the integral test, you have to make sure that all three conditions are satisfied. So how to begin? First, you have to declare your function. f of x is natural log of x over x squared. And the three things we have to check are Yes, is f continuous on the interval that matches the index of summation, so from one to infinity. Well, how do you check that? You figure out what the domain of your function is, as long as it's a subset or equal to the domain. Um, yeah, on the interval that you're, as long as the domain is the subset or equal to this interval, we're good. So what's the domain for natural log of x over x squared? Well, I can't plug in zero for x, but everything else is good to go. So the domain is from zero to infinity. So yes, of course, f is gonna be continuous on zero to infinity. The second thing we check is f positive on the interval from one to infinity. Yes, that one you just kind of do by inspection. Just check it out, look at the function. Is it gonna be positive? And then the third one is f decreasing. That one may not be so obvious. So what do we do? We'll take a derivative and make sure the derivative's negative. So f prime of x, it's time for the quotient rule. We have low d high minus high d low over low low. 
And then the numerator will simplify to x minus 2x ln of x over x to the fourth. I can cancel out an x everywhere, so then I have 1 minus 2 ln of x over x cubed. Now, when you're checking out or investigating the sign of the derivative, remember this derivative really is only of value to us on the interval from 1 to infinity, okay? That matches the index of summation. So for that reason, I can say, yeah, the denominator is always positive because we're not plugging in anything negative. So basically, I want to know, is the numerator going to be negative? Well, let's see. When does it equal 0? 1 minus 2 ln of x is 0. That means ln of x is equal to a half, which means at x equals e to the 1 half, or e equals rad x, or x equals rad e, then the numerator is 0. So as long as x is bigger than rad e, the numerator will be less than 0, and that's good enough for our purposes, okay? As long as you can identify from a certain point onward that the derivative will always be negative, that means we are okay to use the integral test. Whew, that was a close one, you know what I mean? Yes, Professor V, we were nervous too. Okay, so here we go. So now we're gonna consider the integral from one to infinity of natural log of x over x squared dx. Exactly, first thing, quick as a bunny, rewrite it as a limit, don't do anything else. Infinity is not a number, so you can't sit there plugging it in willy-nilly like it was a five for crying out loud. Ln of x over x squared dx. Okay, now from here I know I'm gonna to have to do by parts. If you would like, you can work on that aside with an indefinite integral just to get the antiderivative and then be done with it. Do you know what I mean? So if you just want to do a quick little aside moment and say, all right, we've got this integral ln of x over x squared dx. Let's do by parts. So u dv, u has to be ln of x. dv would be x to the negative second dx du would be 1 over x dx, and v negative 1 over x. So then we've got negative 1 over x ln of x plus integral 1 over x squared or x to the negative second dx. So this is negative ln of x over x minus 1 over x plus c. So then I can just basically plop that back in here but just make sure that you always do a little aside moment if you're gonna stop writing your limits of integration or the limit out front. You just write a new indefinite integral and evaluate it. You can't just abandon ship and say like, oh, I'm gonna ignore these guys and bring them back in later. No, 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 it's not well-defined. Okay, so then we've got here, limit, t goes to infinity, Ooh. negative ln of x over x, minus 1 over x, and this is all going to be evaluated from where to where? From 1 to t. How thrilling. Okay, let's just take the negative outside. It is stressing me out. Then everybody's going to be positive, right? Let's be positive today, people. ln of t over t plus 1 over t, right? Because these all become pluses. Minus ln of 1 over 1 very good, plus one, okay. Boop, boop, boop. So let's see what's going on. So as t goes to infinity, clearly one over t is gonna go to zero. ln of one over one, that equals zero. So that's done. What about, now I saved the best for last. What happens as t approaches infinity to natural log of t over t? Both the numerator and denominator are approaching infinity. So we have an indeterminate form. To be thorough and proper, we need to do L'Hopital's rule. I did make a statement earlier that we know natural log of x doesn't grow as fast as x. So that should give you a hint as to what this limit would be. But at this level in your math class, you should still show your work for this. So let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity, natural log of x over x. We have the indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity, so I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. 
So we'll take the derivative of the numerator, which is 1 over x, over derivative of the denominator, which is 1, and then this is 0. So now I can just plop that back in here. Yep, this goes to 0. So now notice, what's the final result? This is negative 1, but then there's another negative sitting out here. So this limit is positive 1. What do I care about that number? Well, what this tells me is the improper integral converges. Therefore, therefore, the sum k equals 1 to infinity of, yes, it was ln of k over k squared converges by the integral test. And then since we showed that the original series, which was the sum k equals 1 to infinity, k ln of k over k plus 1 squared is less than or equal to the sum k equals 1 to infinity ln of k over k squared, and the larger series converges, then the sum k equals 1 to infinity k ln of k over k plus 1 squared converges also by comparison, direct comparison, right? So this idea is very important. If you can show that some series converges and your series is always smaller than it, then your series converges also, okay? All right, how are we doing? That one was spicy. If you have a different solution, comment below. I don't really think there's too many other slick ways to do it though, because we ran through all the test options. So I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. <laughs> Anyways, um, I really enjoy teaching this unit. I hope you enjoy studying it, but if it's giving you anxiety, have no fear. I have a whole playlist on sequences and series and I can bring back series of the day if that's something that the people enjoy. So comment down below if you'd like to see more of these. And I will be back sooner than later with more math content. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me in on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Bye, guys.